Hi, I'm interviewing my dad right now. Uh, he's going to talk a little about uh, what life was like on the farm in the Great Depression, and um, then he's going to tell a little about how he met mom. So we'll just turn it over to dad. So dad, why don't you tell us a little about uh, what it was like growing up in Nebraska on the farm? Well, of course, I was, I was born on a, on a farm uh, on Highway 30. That's where my grandfather bought my dad a, a farm. Of course, he wouldn't pay for it. You know, my dad was making payments, and that's where all three of us were were born. And then uh, I I remember the uh, uh, Highway 30 being a, a a muddy muddy road, and my da my dad was. Uh, kind enough to, to pull people out who got stuck. So uh, what I, what was it like on the farm growing up? Uh, well, any, anyway, uh, my childhood, uh, uh, the crash came and, and we... Uh, it's the Great Depression. And, and our, Yeah, the Great Depression came and, and my dad uh, couldn't make the payments and so, and then Grandpa was stretched pretty thin because he had bought Henry a farm and Uncle Ralph a farm and Uncle Chester. So he, uh, he could sell those that farm for more money than the rest, of it, so he sold it. And we moved, moved up to Webster, a small town north of uh, uh, probably about 150 miles, probably, so probably sitting. What was it like, though, uh, well, living on a farm? It was, uh, we had a typical farm. You had, you had geese, you know, chickens, pigs, cows, horses, and all that, and and we were involved in and in feeding them, gathering the eggs. And was there electricity on the farm? No, 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 no electricity. We, we had kerosene lanterns uh, in the in the barn, it was on a wire. We just moved the lantern as we took care of the horses or the uh, milk the cows. So how did you plow the fields? Did you have a tractor or use horses? What was that again? How did you plow the fields? Oh, uh, my horses. Yeah. It was all horse drawn equipment. And I remember my dad showing off uh, some of his horses. You know, they were big and strong. and, and, and uh, that we used to, uh, uh, the, the hulls, uh, the, uh, drank a little bit, and, or quite a bit, and he liked to play. And I remember uh, on Sunday after church, the neighbors would get together and they'd uh, play ball. Because, uh, you know, the, the, the baseball was getting real popular at that time. It'd be in uh, uh, 30s, early 30s. I know Babe Ruth and all that was around, but anyway, they they'd uh, listen to radio for the ball games, and then uh, they also played games. They they walk it off and, and put bases and. So, Dad, what what was it like on the farm in terms of uh, you had to do your chores before you go to school? Well, yeah, you had chores. You had, you had to milk the cows and 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 and, and help separate. You know, sep separating is when the milk would run through a separator, you turn it by hand, and and it, it separated the cream from the milk. And so, uh, what time would you get up in the morning and? To do your chores? Well, well, I imagine at 5 30 something. And so, what time would you leave for school? Well, well uh, school it was uh, some, sometimes, all depending on how, how late we were, but we, uh, we walked if we could. If we started early enough, you didn't, then they'd uh, take us by the, I think they had a 28 Chevy. And then, or, we, or, or if the weather was bad or that, uh, uh, or 
snowy and, or too muddy for the car because roads were terrible back then. They didn't have, they were just, you know, the, 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 the townships and all that were fairly new, you know. They were, you know, but, you know. So, Dad, uh, what time would you, uh, so how far would you walk to school? Well, it would be about, about a mile. And, and this was in North Bend you'd go yeah, to school? No, this is Webster. Webster. And, and then when, and, and when my, my dad, uh, uh, you know, he had appendicitis. And back then they, they, they kept the, the patient in, in bed for days. Well, he happened to be uh, the type that uh, adhesions set in. And they didn't know what they were. The X-rays didn't wouldn't show it. And and he just went from one doctor to another. You know, he had terrible pain. And, and so uh, he got got so bad that he, he he couldn't take it any longer, and he committed suicide, and hung himself. And, and then Uncle then Uncle Ralph, his brother, came up and and uh, took over the farm. And and mom moved, moved we moved back to North Bend with my my, my mother's mother or my grandmother Bubiska. and uh, and we went to school there and that's uh, in North Bend uh, it'd be great school then. So and Dad, we, why don't you tell everybody uh, how they kept the uh, community kept it a secret that your dad uh, committed suicide? You didn't find out until you were. Uh, an older man. How old were you when you found out your dad committed suicide? Oh, I, I, well, I, I was you know, probably 12 years old or so, you know, that I found out that, that he did. But my, I think Leland caught on maybe, I don't know. But, but uh, uh, anyway, we, uh, uh, it, uh, it kind of bothered me, you know, for a long time. But, but uh, anyway, we uh, when we were living in North Bend, uh, I, I remember raising chickens in the backyard. You know, everybody had had a garden and a and a, a shed for tools, and and yes, they also they had they dug holes in the ground to put the potatoes and carrots and turnips and so this was uh, during the Great Depression, Great Depression. oh yeah mm -hmm. so you guys were uh, scraping by uh, so you, you guys were just scraping by oh yeah because what, what, what did, um, you know uh, uh, Uncle Joe uh, had, had to help us you know uh, they, uh, just you know, income you know, just, yet, and so it was, uh, how, how mom got by, I have no idea, because uh, she, she worked some. Hi, uh, you reach R L at five two one. And very little wages I mean, getting five cents for, for a container of, of strawberries, you know, and, you know, she just, uh, I just took in ironing, and and uh, and I think uh, so. Anyway, I, I, Delma probably could tell you in more detail on how they got by. But anyway, Frank Ford, a bachelor that, that my mother knew, and my dad knew, uh, started court, courting her in '35. Uh, they they got married and, and we moved to the farm, and that that was a quite an adjustment for Frank Farm because he had four more miles of feed, you know. But uh, my mom was skillful and <clears throat> and making the transition you know, very smooth, and, and of course she worked very hard, you know. She you know had to redecorate the house, and then they. Uh, <clears throat> And, uh, during the Great Depression, there was a great drought, and uh, and he had a crop failure. But we had 
hayland down on, uh, on uh, by the river, 20 acres of hay. So I remember going down there and, and stacking hay, and <coughs> and that we had hay in the winter time for the uh, uh, horses and cows, and and, uh, and so. Uh, but we didn't. Frank Farm, you know, had all the barns and everything, and cribs and stuff. Already built by hand that, that he, he built himself over a period of probably 15 years. These are beautiful structures. Is there an address for that? Because uh, it's, it's, I don't I don't have an address. Just uh, if somebody wanted to find it, how would they find it? With uh, well, back then you, you just put the to, name. Today, how would somebody find it if they well, want to go I, visit the farm? I have farm? to get uh, it's it's seven. Uh, 1924, I think, uh, uh, road, you know, and uh, I, I'll get the address and give it to you, but, uh, that's, uh, but anyway, uh, in order to get milk cows, you know, every, and he didn't have much money, you know, he bought her a 35 Plymouth and, and I was saving, I guess, <coughs> and, um, uh, for a wedding present, and, and to, you know, and he, he uh, anyway, the farmer on the bluff up higher uh, had a terrible drought, you know, they were affected more than we were because we were in the valley, and and so uh, Frank Fordham worked out a deal with the guy that he, he you know, cattle's gonna die because he didn't have any feed, so we took the cattle and melt them and got the calves from them for a period of, I guess, three or four years. And then we gave the cows back, but then we had our own herd, milk cows. And some were Holstein, some were Guernseys, and, and, uh, and uh, cause I enjoyed milking cows. And I could tell you some stories about, you know, some of them were pretty, pretty wild, you know, different. And breeds of, cat, uh, of cows, and, and they'd kick and everything. We had to put kicker kickers on them, and and you know, we'd milk milk them, and then uh, some of the milk, whole milk, uh, we put in the cream and milk cans, and take it out to the road, and then a milkman come by and in a truck and pick it up, and then they weighed it, and. and we got paid that way, so um, once a month they, they got a check from the you know, core op that they collected. And, and of course, another source of income was uh, eggs. And we uh, uh, t took, you know, had, had a hen house and hens, and, you know, chickens. I remember uh, uh, chickens that arriving by the mail. The mailman delivered them. Or, they ran at the post office, I think, and they came on a railroad card, and they took them to the post office, and they'd call. And we picked up the, you know, say a hundred chickens, and then we had we had a, a, a brooder thing. And we had to keep them warm, and that that was a job. It was it was a kerosene burner that acted up. But anyway, that's the way we got our flock of chickens. And, and then uh, we, you know, we had to grind the feed, and and, and uh, at first, you know, he didn't have a grinder, like you know, established farmers, but it, uh, there were portable grinders. Guys, you know, on a, on a on a truck, had grinders come by and they would grind up the the feed so the cattle could digest it better. You know, they grind up the corn and and. And wheat. So, Dad, uh, what were the winters like there in Nebraska? Well, um, uh, it's, it's, sometimes they were brutal. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of snow, a lot of snow shoveling. And then the, when it got bitter cold and that, the, the cows, they stayed in, in the barn. And they, and they, they didn't have much room even to lay down. They just stood up all the time. And it was so so cold. And then we 
had a, a big a lot of manure to, to scoop up and, and and we put it in buckets and then d dump it outside and, and do a pile and then eventually we use that for fertilizer you know on the fields and we put it in a manure, what you call a manure spreader and and uh, and, and the movies that, that Rodney took of my mother's 100th birthday, he, he, he got pictures of the manure spreader still sitting there, you know, rusting yeah. away. But that's what we use, you know, to get an idea. So when did you first get a uh, gasoline tractor? Well, uh, <coughs> he never got a, uh, Frank Farmer never uh, got a tractor until after I left. I left in 46. And my brother stayed stayed home because he he was going to school at at, uh, at a Lutheran college called Middle in Fremont. So he uh, uh, he he worked pretty hard. Frank Farmer was getting he was much older than my mother. He 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 can he can remember the 1888 blizzards hmm. as a child, you know. So I guess he was born in probably eight eight. 1880, and my mother was born in 1995, so he's 15 years older. So, what was it like when you found out about uh, World War II, the Japanese bombing Pearl Harbor? Well, well I, I remember uh, 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 Spies, you know, no, Alan, the Allen's boys, uh, they, they had a radio. And, and we had a radio too, but we, but anyway, I remember coming across the field and, and said that uh, we were in World War Two. So uh, they got they they got drafted, I think, real quick, uh, or volunteered a lot of them because you know, the pay you know on a farmer is terrible, uh, yeah, and they're seasonal, but. Uh, I remember one year it snowed so much that I did have a picture of my brother standing on somebody touching the telephone wire, which was the lowest one, but it still was 10, 10, 10 feet. Mm -hmm. uh, because, because it drifted, you know, it blow, blow, oh, bitter, bitter cold. And, and then a lot of times we went to town and the, the highways were you know, traveled pretty good so it wasn't too bad but when you get off the country roads we, we had, I'd have to go and shovel you know 20 30 feet and mom would pull up and we'd shovel another 20 30 40 50 feet and she'd pull up you know till we got back to the farm and, and of course the cars back then their heaters were terrible, you know. And uh, uh, we, before we left, we, uh, uh, Frank Farm, and Mom would, put, had, would heat bricks. We had them on top of the furnace, and they put them inside of a burlap, and they put their feet on it because, their, because the floorboard of the car was just. Now when it's zero out, you know, it's pretty darn cold. And we always had a time starting them. Oh, you know, yeah, sometimes we, and, and the antifreeze was nothing but alcohol. And we had, we had to uh, you get them very hot, and they'd boil away, and then it's nothing but water. So we had, always had, had to drain them and save it. it. It was a big, big hassle. A lot of times we had to heat the, uh, uh, the carburetor because it'd be water in the gas. For moisture, and we'd had to thaw it out. That was, that was a dangerous job. So, know. Dad, uh, when did you decide to leave uh, the farm and go to St. Louis? Well, when I, I when I graduated, I, you know, uh, there wasn't enough room on the farm, you know, to, to live and to pay me. And I worked for for Ellick Lake. He fed cattle, and then I. Uh, and tried picking corn, and that, that, that was a, my arm, my, this arm, this, I did 
feel it now. This muscle would swell up, and I, I, I had to pick about half of what I was supposed to pick, so that didn't last long. And then uh, I got it, went, to, went to the YMCA in Fremont, and, and I was run over by a wagon when I was about three or four years old. And uh, I always had back aches. And I thought that everybody did, you know. And my legs ate, I got in trouble trouble at school, I go, you know. And so uh, there was happened to be a chiropractor at, at close by to the, uh, on the way to the, uh, the Ford dealership. Deer, it was named Deers, Deers Motors uh, Company. It's still in business, and uh, and I was put to uh, overhauling, rebuilding uh, the V8 engines. They had a flat V8, and and, uh, and I, I drive, well, go by, see the chiropractor, and and, and he, uh, I don't know if he x-rayed me or, or just palpated me and he said, man, he said, you're back in bad shape for a young man like you. He said, why don't you go to St. Louis? He said, and, and go, go to Logan College uh, there. So I, so I had to, you know, you know, very little money in my pocket. And so uh, I came on a bus and I went to Logan. There happened to be a meeting down there, and so he picked me up. And, uh, and I soon found out I couldn't handle the curriculum and work. I got a job at the bowling alley. I worked you know, real late at night and then I'd study and get up, and I, I couldn't hack it. Hack it. This is Logan College. Uh, it's in Creve Court, still uh, there today. Yeah. So was it a big campus back then, or was it just oh, a little? Oh yeah, there was. Was this pre Bell? You know, see, I didn't have that. And uh, and so uh, I got a, a job at the uh, at the Ten Pin Inn. At, at this Texas. is Ferguson. In Ferguson, yes, and and Ten Pin Inn and Bowling Alley. Well, of course, um, and of course, I, I was a likable kid because I was quiet. I didn't, um, and uh, so I worked at, uh, at Ten Penny Inn, and then uh, there was a return uh, a GI come in there, and he was a builder. His name was Harry Wilson, and he said, well, "Why don't you come?" He said, "I'll come here and eat." He said, you do your dishes and mop the floors, whatever I had to do. You know, after rush hour, about 1.30, uh, we'd take off and, 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 uh, and work, you know, with him until he got going. Yeah, he had a bunch of lots already paid for before the war. But he, he was, uh, I called him a, a German Jew, you know, because he was very, very tight. <clears throat> but he took a liking to me and and, uh, and so I, I started working full time when it, when he uh, had building but we already got laid off. So I worked at Finley stations, t tin shops, you know, cardboard factories, you know, all kinds of <laughs> uh, uh, jobs. And but uh, and I remember working uh, at Star Filling Station at 2300 South Broadway, and there was a gas war, and, a, and, a, and the gas was 9.9 .9 a gallon. Wow. Of course, that didn't last long, but uh, uh, anyway, uh, the guy who managed the Star Filling Station, he would spy on all the workers. He said, you're the best worker we got, because I didn't horse around and talk and all that, you know. Anyway, and then I worked at uh, 
And then I'd go work at the bowling alley, you know, cleaning. You know, the alleys, you know, mopping the floors. And, and then eventually uh, he added on uh, the pool tables and stuff. He built them. And I was involved in that, you know, setting up forms and all that stuff. And, and I'll, I'll never forget, I was down in the basement the bowling alley, and I was, uh, he had a lot of, lot of lumber and stuff, so he, he wanted to get rid of it, so I cut it up in small pieces, and I, and I saw some paint cans, so I picked one up, and man, it was so heavy, God. So I pried it open, and it was full of dimes, Roosevelt dimes. Hmm. He, he, he hated Roosevelt. And, and Every dime that came across from the bowling alley, he took it out of circulation. <laughs> oh, knee health. And, so but, the bowling alley is, uh, is gone now today, Well, right? it's there, but it's not in operation. Because okay. I there, remember there, going down there as a kid. Yeah, there's no uh, alley there either anymore. The, the, his, bo his boys, uh, what happened, uh, knee house only had one son, Francis, and, <laughs> and he was... Would loved it enough when he was doing, you know, because they both worked, and they, they, that poor poor kid never. But uh, anyway, everything that D House touched turned to gold, just practically. And he uh, he was open 24 hours a day during the war, when that small arms plant was going, 24 hours a day. Oh, he was raking in the money. And, you know, he started out with eight alleys, and then you know. He, we built eight more, and then, uh, and then, uh, and then he added on the pool table, the, the addition. So, Dad, how did you get into the construction business? Well, uh, uh, Harry Wilson could buy the, the ten pin in where I was working, and uh, well, I, I happened to be saying, this is what. He, uh, I stayed with Mrs. Alice, as his mother, even though uh, she remarried. You know, her first husband died, or, or they got a divorce, and and uh, she married a Will Susan. No, well, I guess. So, but, but anyway, his his her son was uh, King, uh, I was staying there. I was working at the Bowen Alley and. Different things, and uh, then he came back from the service. He got discharged, and he had sent home. Back then, you could send the money home. He sent home a hundred thousand. He was he was a card shark. He played cards with the guys. You know, the guys got paid. They don't do that now. You so know? he got you into the construction business. Yeah, well, yeah, he he was, he started building houses when he was eighteen, and uh, and his stepfather, you know, was in it sheet metal business, you know, furnace, sheet metal, and so forth, and, uh, and, and then his, his, his buddy, uh, yeah, his father was in the construction business, and so, uh, the, the two boys. So he invited you to start working with him? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and when I was staying there in the house, and, and then he, and then his wife came, too, and they had a daughter. And it was a three bedroom, or four bedroom, I guess it was two, three, probably a four bedroom house. And so he just said, I'll come by, pick you up, and, and we do grading, you know. Well, we've got day. one more minute left on the tape uh, so, before it runs out. So anyway, uh, I, I gradually worked with, uh, and then I, that's where I met, met my wife, because at lunchtime we went. To a little cafe there on Natural Bridge, yeah. and uh, so uh, I you know, got her name and you know, where she lived, and and uh, I, I had a car, a th thirty thirty seven Ford, I think it was, and then uh, I, I, you know, uh, I was talking to her. She said, "I have two children." Well, she said, 
when she ever told uh, her, her friends who wanted to date her, when they did, they shied away, you know. But I didn't, because uh, I had a stepfather and understood, you know. So I, so we uh, started dating, then, then we uh, got married, and, uh, and they lived in a house across the street. That's here on Bartow, uh, uh, yeah, 131 Bartow, so it's across the street from that. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, and then first I started uh, building a house, decided to build a house. And so we bought the property up at 150 Bartow. And, uh, and I really don't I didn't know a lot because I was a laborer, actually. You know, I, I carried a labor card. I remember the, the, the big. Lincoln pulled up one time and said, where's your card? I said, what are you talking about? He said, your work card, your working card, your union card. I said, I don't know. He talked to Harry. So he, he, he said, so he, Harry told him to go, go down. And he wanted 50 bucks. Now, I didn't have 50 bucks, so he loaned it to me. And I, he held out my pay, you know, 10 bucks at a time or so. And, uh, hmm. and uh, I got my labor, and then, then uh, when I started building the house, I, uh, you know, uh, Ken Butcher, you know, a, a carpenter, has come back from the service, and uh, he knew Harry in the service, I think. That's why he started working for him. So, and, Dad, we got one more minute and we're okay. out of time. So, anyway, I, uh, uh, yeah, he helped me build uh, the 50 uh, Barto, you know, and then uh, and, uh, the plumber came by. You know, we had the plumber and the electrician and all that. And he said, man, your wife pregnant and no job? He said, why don't you go down to Byron Hill and, and talk to Herb Gettemeyer? So I did. Oh, yeah. He said, I'll go to work. And he, he paid, paid me, you know, $4 an hour or something like that. And then after a while, he said, uh, you're doing carpenter work, too. He said, why don't you... Go down the hall and get a carpenter's card. I'll pay you a dollar an hour or more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that began my began my uh, carpenter career. And, <laughs> and, Herb, and, and give it to Herb Gettemeyer and Robert Mullerine, who was you know, returned GI. But well, we've run out of time. But I want to thank uh, Dad uh, for uh, sharing the story, and mm -hmm. thank you very much.